Noswaita, good evening and welcome to this Colleague Cambria question and answer session. Welcome, my name is Lizzie Stevens, I'm Head of Inclusion and we're joined this evening with uh, key people from our support services across the college and tonight we're going to be answering all of your questions, hopefully we have a chance to answer them all. All of your questions about what you can expect from support services and other things when you come to college. So we're going to start by introducing ourselves and I'm going to ask Owain to go first if you don't mind. Thanks Lizzie. Uh, my name is Owain Roberts. I'm Head of Marketing, Admissions and Digital at College Cambria. Thank you. And James? Hi everyone. Uh, I'm James Roberts. I'm a Progress Coach at College Cambria and I'm based at Yale site within the sixth form. Thank you. Uh, over to you Bethan. Hi, good evening. I'm Bethan and I'm the Student Services Manager and there's a Student Services uh, Department on every site in the college. Fantastic, thank you. And finally to Rona. Hi, I'm Rona Griffiths and I work across all the sites and I work with an amazing team of individuals who are going to be organising all the extracurricular activities with yourselves. So it's all for learner-led learner experiences. Thank you. And as I said earlier, I'm Lizzie Stevens. I'm Head of Inclusion. So I'm responsible for things like equality and diversity, uh, mental health and well-being, um, learning support and specialist study skills. So how's it going to work? Well, over the next hour, you can pop any questions you might have into the chat box and we will um, try and answer them as we go along. We've already had quite a few questions come in previously, so we thought that might be a great place to start. Um, there'll be an opportunity as well. Don't worry if you don't get your don't have chance to have your question answered during the session. You can contact us afterwards. We're always online. Social media will always pick it up as well. So uh, don't worry about that. So we're going to um, start with one of the questions we received, and it's a big question and an important one, not just for for our students coming in, but also for our staff. When does college start? So I'm going to pass that over to Bethan, if you're OK to answer that, please. Thank you. Yeah, induction week is uh, Monday the 5th of September until the 9th of September. You will receive an email to let you know which days you need to be attending during induction week. If you haven't had an email yet, don't worry. One will come out to you soon. So, yeah, just just if, wait for that email. If you haven't received anything soon, get, get back in touch with us. But you will get something from uh, admissions at Cambria or welcome at cambria.ac.uk. And does everybody start on the same day, Beth, and how does it work? No, they don't. So there'll be staggered start. So some groups will start the Monday, some will start the Wednesday. So that's why I can't give a definite answer because it'll depend on what course you're on and, and also sometimes what site you're on. So it's individual to each person. So the key thing is there is a message. If you haven't had it already, there yeah. is there is there are details on the way there is certainly yet yeah. don't panic we you will get you will hear from us that's brilliant thank you so in the same sort of thing somebody's asked us um when we'll be getting our timetables so james are you able to answer that yeah of course um so timetables will be um out during induction week um, and then once you are at the college um you can also download the college cambria student app um, and your timetables will show up on the app as well. Fantastic. And what about finding your way around? Is will 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 people know how to how to get around the college? Yeah. So during um, induction week, um, new students will be taken on tours. So that's one of the remits that I've got as a progress coach. Um, so there'll be lots of support on offer to kind of help you around the place once you start in September. That's brilliant. Okay then. Uh, the next question we've had is about student ID, and you'll see we've all got our, our ID on here, so, you know, students do, do get lanyards. So the question is, when and how um, are we going to get our student ID? So, um, oh, Ian, are you able to answer that one, please? Yeah, no problems at all. Okay, uh, as Liz has mentioned, it's really important that you do keep your student ID and your lanyard on you uh, during all, all times during the college, and you'll get them during your first week from your tutor or your progress coach, but... Um, they are really important for a number of different reasons. From a safeguarding perspective, it lets us know that you're one of our students. 
Uh, and also, um, we mentioned about getting around college. A lot of the uh, access to the different areas of the college is controlled by your student ID. So having it on you will mean that you can get around the college freely. So please do keep that on you. If you do lose it, it's, it's not too much of a problem, but you do need to come and let us know um, so we can uh, issue with you with a new one. But uh, any issues regarding things like that, then just come into student services and we can help you and make that make sure that that's a smooth uh, transition period. Brilliant. So just to clarify then, you don't get that before you come to college. It's it's during that first week. That's right. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. Um, and another big question and something that we know uh, worries a lot of people, but uh, somebody has asked us about the, the bus travel. So um, do students get free bus travel and how does it work, please, Bethan? Yes, they certainly do. Um, there is uh, free transport to college sites on dedicated college buses. There is more information on the college app and the website. Again, each uh, where you live and each site is different. So uh, please check out um, www.cambria.ac.uk forward slash free dash transport, which is at the bottom of the screen now, hopefully, um, for more information about which site you're traveling to and um, what the transport route actually is. If you're still not sure, please contact um, transport or student services and we'll be able to, to help in, in any way that we can. Brilliant. And we know a lot of students do get worried about this because, yeah. you know, sometimes there's changes with the, the um, right. buses. So you have to change yeah. uh, into two buses. Yeah. Just just to reassure everybody that all our um, listeners and watchers tonight, there are staff available at, at all times. So at every point of, of the changeover. So at D-Side, for example, we have uh, managers. We've, we've also got wellbeing assistants who are in bright green jackets. They're there to make sure that you get on the right bus. Our priority is to make sure that you arrive at college feeling really um, happy and safe, but also that you get home safely too. 100%. If you, uh, yeah. Um, and don't worry, we don't leave you if you um, there, there is you are able to contact somebody if you uh, if you miss your bus, and we, we we do support with that. So no worries there. Thanks, Bethan. Can I just add on there as well that there's a dedicated phone line now till uh, till after college hours. So if people are so it's before and after college. So if people are um, found themselves in a difficult situation, there is a number to ring now as well. So there's, oh, there's really after college and before college support for learners. That's fantastic. And will will students get that number in the first week? Yes, they will. It should have gone out in the welcome packs and is available um, on the website as well. But again, if you're not sure, pop into student services and make sure you've got that number. That's brilliant. And just you were saying about student services there, Bethan. Is that on every site? Is the student are the student services um, support on every site? Yeah, there's student services, uh, a member of student services team on every site. And we're usually located right by reception. So we're a quite um, uh, visible. So you know where, yeah, yeah, quite visible about where, where we are. And, and it's extremely accessible for everybody. So please come in and say hello. That's also where um, Rona's team's based yeah. as well. So please come in and say hello. Yeah. And like we said before, the staff all around college at all times. So we uh, we we don't we don't lose students. So um, we make sure that people, uh, especially in those first few weeks, you'll feel really supported. OK, so a uh, question we've had through here um, is about results, GCSE results. We know that everybody's uh, uh, worried about or excited about that at the moment. So. How do you, how, we've asked, how do we submit our GCSE results when we receive, we receive them on the 25th? So, Owain, are you able to answer that, please? Yeah, happy to take that one, Lizzie, yeah. So, over the next couple of days, um, there'll be an email going out. It'll go, go out to all students who've got offers in with us, um, and it'll go out from the address welcome at cambria.ac.uk, and it'll be titled Confirm Your Place. Uh, and then, obviously, when you get your GCSE results on that day, if you come on to that, there's a, within that email, there's actually a dedicated link that's personalised to you. So you click on that link when you've got your GCSE results. And then within that portal, there's, there's guidance within there that let you know how you can in, in, input your, your qualifications and confirm your place so you can tell us that you're coming um, to College Cambria this September. Uh, and that needs to be done by Tuesday, the 30th of August. 
Um, so fingers crossed, everyone's got the qualifications that they need. But if you don't happen to get the qualifications you need, please don't worry. Use that link and let us know through that link. Or you can come down to any of our sites on the Thursday of GCSE Results Day or the Friday. And we've got tons and tons of staff who are ready to support you to find you a course that's the right level for you. Because it is really important that you go on a course that is the right level for you. So there's lots of support. That, e that email will be going out, that really important email, confirm your place. That will be going out over the next couple of days. And then obviously, once you've got your GCSE grades, um, you can then go onto the portal and you can follow the guidance from there. But there's also live chat within the, within the portal. So there's lots and lots and lots of support in different ways on those GCSE results today. But a good luck from me. I'm sure everyone else on the call with the GCSE. GCSE. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thanks, OI. Does that work the other way as well? If you get better results than you're expecting, can you come in and, and look at other options? Or that, that depends on the type of course. Some courses you need to start at a certain level because there's basic skills that you need to learn in order to progress on to higher level courses. But in some areas, it may be the case that if you do get, get higher grades, you can, you can potentially move up or be fast-tracked on to a high level. So there's certainly a conversation to be had there, but all that information can be provided to us through that portal. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable using it or you want to come down and see us, then, as I say, we've got tons of staff who are geared up, ready to help students on that GCSE results day, which is the Thursday and the Friday of next week. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And uh, Croso to all of our uh, Welsh speaking students. And um, we're really pleased and excited that you're joining us in September. And we've had a question about that. So uh, somebody's asked us their first language is Welsh. And what resources do we have in Welsh and can work be submitted through the medium of Welsh? Um, James, are you able to answer that, please? Yeah, of course. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Um, work can be submitted through um, the Welsh language. Um, there'll be kind of you might be able to follow specific course elements or modules in Welsh as well. Um, if courses require um, some kind of work experience, um, there'll be options to, to do that in a Welsh speaking environment. Um, and in terms of um, session and learning resources um, you can request that notes be produced bilingually so any kind of terminology and um, subject specific terminology you might need help with and um, that can all be translated into the medium of welsh for you um, and then on our college sites we do have um, welsh language hubs as well so there's plenty of support available uh, for welsh speakers at the college yeah. and college cambria is really keen that we uh, we ensure that people do continue to to use their Welsh language or to um, study study in Welsh as well and to extend their Welsh language you know we're really passionate about that so you'll get all the support and all the um, all the help that you need to make sure that you you're able to do that fantastic so here's a question we know we know um, a lot of you are probably uh, thinking about worried about we know many of you have had uniforms at school so the question is really um, somebody's asked what do I wear? Is there a uniform? Rona, are you able to shed some light on that, please? Yeah, sure. And the answer is no. There's no uniform um, at College Cambria. Just make sure that you you wear suitable clothing for college and that, you know, it's something that you feel comfortable in. Um, if there is actually a specific kit or uniform that you need for your course, um, then your tutor will tell you about that in the first week. The same goes for PPE. Fantastic. Thank you. OK, so, so you don't have to buy anything before the course yeah. starts. Brilliant. OK, now here's here's a big question. And um, it's about whether somebody's asking whether they don't if they don't like their course, what do they do about that? Um, so, James, are you able to give yeah. some advice there? that? Um, so obviously it's a completely um, normal situation. It's something I've I came across quite a lot um, this year in my role as a progress coach. Um, so obviously when you start college, you've made a decision about the courses you want to do. And sometimes you might change your mind about it. And that's um, completely, completely fine. So in the first few weeks of term, um, we operate what's called a swap, don't drop policy. Um, so if you wanted to find your progress coach or one of your tutors or speak to someone in student services, um, there is the facility there to swap and change courses um, rather than just leaving the college altogether so if you do feel like you want to swap in September um, just come and speak to one of us. That's fantastic okay thank you for that James um, and another question we've got through here is 
how many hours a week does a typical student have in college? So, um, Beth, are you able to help us with that? Yeah, um, it's usually most college courses are three days. Some might be more. Um, I'm thinking A levels are usually could you could have different courts different sessions through the day but in the most part it's three days a week um again it's it's not like school it's and it's um usually quarter to nine nine o'clock and then you finish either half or quarter to five that tends to be the the average college day but again each site's different so yeah you're best off uh finding out an induction week exactly what's specific to your course and if you're worried about anything or not sure about anything speak to your progress coach your course tutor or pop into student services but yeah it's usually three days i'm saying and um for, for students who find that they actually work better at college because you will be expected to do some work on those other two days yeah. um so if if you find that actually you need you're better off coming into college we do have support available on every site we have a library area um there are very very skilled and trained study skills staff within that area and we've also got inclusion areas where you can go and um, have a quiet space if you if you want to um, have a quiet space with some specialist study support as well so um yeah if you find that actually you don't you don't you're not able to work at home there's always a good space and a good place uh, to sit and study in a quiet area too thank you for that Bethan. Okay. So uh, another question here um, is more about the social side of college, because it's not just about getting academic qualifications. There's a lot more to coming to college. So what can we expect, Rona? What clubs are on offer? Crikey, there are loads and loads of clubs on offer um, and lots of things to do. So when you are at college, you don't have to leave. So you can actually stay, meet mine like like-minded people, and then just actually build up your skills, build up your confidence, make friends, all of that, and actually do better in your studies as a result. Now, we've got um, over 30 student-led clubs and societies, and these are on top of the actual clubs and societies that are linked to some of our um, courses, such as STEM, science, language, maths, um, and some of the, the college sports teams as well. So you'll have to trial for those. But the student-led um, clubs, they range from LGBTQ+. We've got Environmental Club, Interfaith Buddies. We've got Minecraft, Tabletop Gaming, Debate Club, Newsletter and Blog Writing. We've got Creative Writing. We've got Harry Potter Fan Club. We've got movies, fan clubs. We've got art, anime, and manga. We've got rock and metal music, lots of music appreciation clubs, actually. Equality and diversity groups. We've got disability group, young carers group. We've got lots of different craft clubs, an enterprise club. And that's also really good for um, uh, arranging fundraising for charities and actually taking part in student markets and you can help run those markets. We've got basketball, dodgeball, netball, um, and bushcraft through our chaplaincy as well. And we also have Engage for our autistic students. So lots of different clubs that are, but the important thing is they're student led. You know, they're all there because this is part of your college. You decide what you want to do. And then on top of that, you've got um, all the event planning, through the um, student reps so lots of things to do and keep you keep you busy actually and challenged when you're at college so do students find out about that in the in the, in the induction week absolutely and james and the progress coaches will um, bring you down and you'll meet the learner experience team and all of our partners in the freshers fairs so there's going to be a freshers fair in on every site in that first induction week so it's a good chance to come and meet everybody. But as Bethan was saying, just come and find us. We're always either in student services or we're in the libraries themselves. So just come, have a chat, have a game of Jenga or, you know, lots of different games going on. That's brilliant. And um, 
if I know that your team are absolutely fantastic. If somebody comes up with an idea for a club, they they yeah. do everything to make it happen, don't they? Yeah, so it's absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, thanks for that. And um, a question that I'm going to attempt to answer, uh, and probably a question that a lot of people are quite interested in, is what type of learning support is available? So if you, on your application form, if you did um, put that you would like support, then you will have already been contacted by the, um, by the additional learning needs and inclusion team. Um, but just to reassure you, we have lots and lots of very specialist staff in college who are there to make sure that your experience is exactly what you hope it is and to make sure that you're included in everything. So we have um, the, we have two autism mentors. We have health and well-being staff. We have a mental health practitioner. We have um, 11 specialist study skills tutors. They're the people who work with you to make sure that... Um, if you're dyslexic or you have ADHD or autism, to make sure that you have an equal opportunity to succeed as your other student, as your other um, peers do. So they'll work with you one to one and they will also put in things like exam access arrangements. So if you haven't um, had any contact or you um, would like to know more about the support available, we have got the numbers there, on the, the, the addresses there on the screen there, learning.support at cambria.ac.uk, and our team of coordinators, support coordinators, will contact you um, as soon as you send a message through. They answer it every day, so uh, please, please do, do reach out to us if you feel that you uh, need some support that you haven't already told us about. So uh, the last of the, the, the questions that we've already had in, um, and then we'll, we'll answer some of the questions that I know that are coming through um, on the screen there. So over to you, I think, for this one, Owain. Am I too late to apply for a course at Colley Cambria? No, absolutely not. Um, we're still accepting applications for most courses. Some have gone to waiting lists, but they're, they're few and far between. Um, but we, have, we are still accepting applications for our full-time courses and um, we'll continue to accept those right up until October the 7th. So if there are any learners out there who perhaps uh, haven't come to College Cambria and have gone elsewhere and have perhaps uh, aren't happy or want to come and come to come and experience College Cambria, then they can do so within that those first few weeks of September and into October. But obviously the sooner we, we get that application, the less of the course the learner will have missed. Um, but absolutely, we are still accepting applications and if someone hasn't applied, um, and they want to come down on the GCSE results day. Then, as I mentioned before, we've got tons and tons and tons of staff from all support areas and all subject areas who can talk to you at length about the courses, find out if it's right for what you want to do as a career, and really um, give you the offer to get make sure you're on that right right course. But yeah, absolutely, it's still not, definitely not too, not too late to apply for the college. That's really good to know. Um, thank you for that, Owen. So over to you guys now. So um, we we're getting some questions. Thank. you. Thank you thank you for participating uh, that's really helpful so we've got a question here thank you deborah for um putting this question through for, to us when are the students likely to get the welcome pack okay I can, I can, I can, you I can, yeah so welcome packs um we had to take a cut off point on welcome packs um so that was um early on in august august 1st so uh if so long as a learner had had an offer by august 1st they will receive an, um, a welcome pack um, they have been going out over the last couple of days, um, so they should be on their way. If they haven't had a welcome pack, then um, you can email marketing at cambria.ac.uk and we'll do our very best. We can't guarantee, but we'll do our very best to get one out to you. If we can't get the freebies that are in there out to you, we'll certainly get the literature that's in there out to you. Okay. hope that answered that for you, Deborah. Okay. Isabella, thank you. Uh, I, we did we did have a chat about the date we start, please. But uh, Bethan, do you mind just uh, explaining? Yeah, so different courses start on different days or different inductions will happen on different days. So it depends on what course you're doing. Um, will It will result on that you starting either, I think, the Monday or the Wednesday of induction week. Um, so again, it'll depend on, on your course and what site you're on. But information should go out to you um, 
I would say imminently. You should receive something over the next few days, next few weeks, just to explain when exactly your start date is. It could be after the time you've confirmed your place um, in college. So uh, wait till around uh, GCSE results day, which is next Friday, which is the 25th. You still haven't received anything the week after. Please get in touch with us, and we will will certainly find out for you. So yeah, so it, contact welcome at cambria.ac.uk. Yeah, that's right. That welcome welcome at cambria.ac.uk is, is is your email address for anything related to start dates, uh, confirm your place, um, anything anything in relation to um, your, whether you've not had your email for confirm your place or anything like that. Then. The email again for anything in relation to just getting you started at college is welcome at cambria.ac.uk. Fantastic. And oh, well done, Isabella. It's good to have uh, some <laughs> questions coming through. Um, so, introduction week, well, we call it induction week. And um, probably the person who knows um, most about induction week is uh, James. Can you tell Isabella a little bit more? I know you did mention it earlier, but uh, could you tell her a little bit more about that first week? Yeah, sure. So um, <clears throat> that induction week is just to um, really for you, for you to become familiar with the college. So you'll meet all of your um, subject tutors, you'll meet your progress coaches. Um, we can kind of take you around and give you a tour of the site. Um, any kind of um, support services, you'll kind of become familiar with those. Um, and it's just really a chance for you to, to, to get to grips with the course that you've selected. Um, and yeah, kind of meet tutors and get, it's, it's about getting as much information really about the college and your course as possible in that first week. Can I jump in there as well, please, um, with you there? Um, there's, that first week will make you feel really welcome at the college. That's our aim, to just make sure that, you know, you arrive and that you're excited about coming to college and you can see how different it is to school as well. So you'll meet people at college, you meet all of our support services and partners. Um, there'll be a freshers fair. You'll have a tour of the different sites. So it's not just an induction into your course, but you can really meet and chat to people who can help you throughout your um, time at college. So it's everybody from the chaplain, there's the Duke of Edinburgh, there's lots of activities going on even at lunch times. We just want you to do as many things that you want to do at the college and we're here to help you. Thanks, Rona, that's really helpful. Um, okay, Eliza, oh, there's a, there's a question for me. Is there a lot of support for mental health? Well, let me reassure you that that is something we take very, very serious at the college. And we've invested a lot of um, time and resources into making sure that we can support people who do have mental ill health. So um, within the college, I've actually just, um, I've just popped a link on that I hope we can share with you. Um, we have a mental health practitioner. She's a qualified practitioner and she works really closely with our external services, things like CAMS, or uh, mental health services so she can she can she's there to support um if you require a sort of transition from services into the college college cambria ones oh thank you um the the email's just up there for you eliza we've also though we've got a lot of well-being support at the college and this is where we really um we really put a lot into because we want to avoid anybody becoming uh more ill or or becoming uh, concerned or anxious whilst they're on their courses. So we have a lot of wellbeing um, clubs, um, we have areas that you can go to, and certainly on our bigger sites, we have fantastic wellbeing hubs where you can come, relax, take some time out for your course. We also um, make sure that we give you a lot of support before exam week, that's um, exam times. We know that that's a trigger point, so there's lots of activities, lots of um, stress reducing, reducing activities during those weeks leading up to exams. So the, the answer to the question is yes, we recognize that everybody's needs are different. So we know that um, no two people are the same. So the best thing to do is to come and speak to our team. We have, like I say, we've got uh, Nadia, who's the mental health practitioner. We've also got Leah, who's the wellbeing coordinator. And we've got a whole team of wellbeing assistants. They're going to be around the college wearing very bright green hoodies with wellbeing team on the back and here to help on the sleeves. So you can't miss them. They're, um, they're almost luminous in what they're wearing. So you 
can't miss them. So there's lots of people there to support. The, the other thing we've introduced as well, Rona, I'm not sure if you, uh, sorry, Lizzie, I'm not sure if you mentioned it. We, we've also got a 24 hour, seven day a week, three, 365 student yeah. assistance line, yeah. which has got qualified counsellors at the end of it. Um, and that, that information will will be passed to you by your progress. It's on a it's on a card that we've created for progress coaches to give out to students. So that's a, a 24 7 365 um, support line that's for students who are suffering with potential m m crisis or anything like that, that they can they can contact qualified yeah. counsellors. So that's yeah. that's a new addition to the already fantastic wraparound support we've got at the college. I was going to say as well, sorry. Yeah, well, pop into student service as well if you're not sure where to go, because we can always uh, direct you and, and guide you into the next steps of what kind of support you may need. And the same with the progress coaches as well, because you'll yeah. develop a, a, a working relationship with the with the progress coaches who really get to know you. So it's a whole team approach when it comes to your health and well-being. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I think that's again, that's where Active Cambria sits. So yeah. it really is about your mind, body, and soul. You know, we're not about just sport, it is about the the whole learner. You're in good hands. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the answer to the question is actually yes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of support available yeah. and we do take it incredibly seriously. Mm -hmm. So um, please be reassured. If you'd like any further questions, please contact um, Nadia through that email address. OK, Bethan, um, one yeah. for you, I think. From Aaron. Right, yeah. There is a number to ring if you do miss the bus. Um, we've got a hotline number 0300 30 30 007. But there is a direct number that will be available to you if I can. Um, it should be in your welcome packs, the direct number. But again, um, we can get that um, advertised more freely ready for September so if you do miss the bus and it's say early in the morning there's a direct helpline to to help you out and and get, give you guidance at the time yeah I've got to got that it's, yeah you uh, do yeah 01978 515 454 and it's manned from 7 a.m to 9 a.m so yeah if you do miss the bus and then after college if you found yourself in in a difficult situation um there's it's available from 4 p.m to 6 p.m as well so there is a designated phone line to ring just on that one as well we also um as, as staff as managers at the college we also undertake bus duty as well so we make sure learners are comfortable getting off buses and getting onto the one going to Norfolk because that can be quite worrying and then obviously we, if there's any issues after college um maybe potentially the learners late for the bus or a bus is having some issues, it's broken down, for instance, then there is always management around to be able to support learners at those key periods during the, the college day. Yeah. Again, um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Lizzie. <laughs> I'm just going to say, like you, like Lizzie mentioned earlier as well, if you are worried about the, the shuttle buses between the sites or the transport to and from college, because that can be a, a great source of anxiety for mm -hmm. some people, um, just get in touch with the college and someone can really support you with that. Sorry to jump in, Lizzie. <laughs> I was going to say exactly the same with wellbeing assistants. Again, you yeah. can't miss them. They look like great big peas in their um in their in their green jackets. They're around and they're there to make sure that people are on the transport safely. So, oh, here's a good one from Deborah. Good, good, good point. Good question. Do we get do students get discounts for the gym? Uh, Rona, can you yeah. help that, please? Uh, I can help a little bit on this one. Yes, there is a student um, discount at the Deeside Gym. It's not run by the uh, college, but it's Lifestyle Fitness. It's a great gym. They've got different classes, everything going on. And so you do get a, a slight discount on that if you are in Deeside or Northup as well, because they can come and join. Um, apart from that, we've got Active Cambria sessions going on. So we have free sessions for students and for staff at lunch times, and then just um, in that last period from four till quarter to five. So you've actually got some free sessions that you can take part in as well. Um, I think this term we are arranging Women Wellness Wednesdays. 
So, um, cause some of our students, they, they feel a bit shy in joining gyms. So we've got female only sessions on a Wednesday and that will actually get you, you get like a, a free pass into the gym for about, I think it's about six weeks. And then you get a kit bag at the end of that. And then equally for men, we've got the, I think it's the male, oh, hang on, male wellness on the Monday. That doesn't sound male mental wellness Monday or something. So you've got exactly the same deal. So lots of things going on, Deborah. Okay, that's brilliant. Thanks, thanks for that, Rona. Um, and I have to say, the Active Cambria sessions are brilliant. It's yeah. a really nice way where staff and students actually join together. I know I love the uh, the yoga sessions. I hope I'm hoping they're going to be on a Friday again because that yeah. works. Great. But um, it's really nice. And and again, uh, students joining with staff, it's fantastic. Really good. Okay, uh, Amy, thank you. Um, and something close to my heart um, about maths, which I, I do struggle with, is maths compulsory to reset for full-time students at any age? So who's going to volunteer to answer that one? James, is that up your street? Um, uh, were you going to say something then, Bethan? I, I was just going to say that the skills team would probably the, be the best person to answer that. Um, but I would say for all students, um, if it's not necessarily maths, GCSE, some sort of numeracy and literacy would be part of the timetable from what I understand from last year. But again, to say 100%, definitely, I don't know whether I, I certainly couldn't answer, but it does tend to be um, an hour and a half to two hours of maths. And, and then the same again with, with English or literacy uh, across the timetable so yeah and there's also uh, PC sessions as well that will will be will be incorporated into into your course I know that doesn't really answer that question but I don't know whether we can maybe get back to yeah. to Amy and let her know individual I circumstances I don't know those sessions are done in a lovely way as well yeah. so it's not as though it's compulsory it's not done like to like get at you in any way they're really good, they're really supportive, and they will build up your skills. So you'll feel far more um, empowered on your course. Mm. So they're done in a really good way. So hopefully they should be linked with the course that you're doing. I think that's the plan moving forward. So it's it's very interlinked with um, with with the course that you're actually on. So, so it's of benefit to you. Mm. Yeah. I think, I think um, the other thing as well is it, 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 it's crucially important for progression as well onto higher level courses as well. So I think, Amy, if you could um, send a direct message to our Facebook page um, with your contact details, do it as a direct message, don't put it on the page, um, and then we can try and get that picked up by one of our skills tutors who can get back to you. Or, as we've mentioned, pop down and see us on GCSE results today. But if you can't wait that long and you want to get it answered, then we can certainly pick that up Um with our skills tutors uh, over the next couple of days. So just drop us a direct message on Facebook and we can uh, pick that up for you. Thanks, Owain. And maybe this one um, is for you as well, actually, Owain, if possible. So Deborah's asking if um, somebody decides not to join and to stay at school, um, what do they need to do? Okay, if a learner decides to stay at school and school isn't for them, I'm assuming this is kind of what the question's asking. If someone does go to school, um, is that... What, no, I think it's, it's if they if they decide not to come to college and to stay at sixth form. Yeah, yeah. So if they stay at sixth form and it isn't it isn't for them, um, then obviously we, we we've got that period within September that they can come over to the college. Um, but as I say, it, it, the sooner we can we can get the learner with us, um, then the, the less of the course they will have they will have missed. I think so that's they, kind of do they need do they need to let us know? Um, oh, I see what you mean, College yeah. know if they're not going to take their place. Um, yeah, that would be great if you would. That'd be fantastic. Sorry, I've misunderstood that. Yeah, brilliant. If you could do that, Deborah. If they do decide to stay at school, um, then it just frees up it frees up that place really for us to be able to. If it's a really popular course, we we do have courses that can only take a finite amount of numbers. So, yeah, if you would let us know, that would be amazing. And I think that was a really good point that Owen just said there as well. And um, actually. You know, we do get a lot of students who, who think they wanted to stay at for sixth form and actually change their mind. And and again, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, um, there's, a, there's a period of time where they can make that decision and come over and talk to us. So um, we'll, you know, we'll be able to um, discuss 
changes from from school to college in is it the first six weeks or so something like yeah. that yeah we've yeah. got that but obviously as soon the sooner the better because the, yeah. it, there's, there's, there's there's amount of courses that we uh that we we, we miss out okay so um dinners so yeah we um we do have well beth and you might be able to answer about the the paying but uh just to say that we do have on sites we do have um canteens we've also got uh costa coffee on um i think all sites of mo most sites um so how do students pay for these please bethan yeah so um at college cambry we do have a free breakfast so on each site, there's breakfast available to learners. I think if I'm right, it's like a, a cup of tea or um, and a piece of toast, something along those lines. Um, in terms of college dinners, students would either bring their own or pay by card. I don't think there's anything like in terms of, in, I think in some schools they pay by the phone and there's um, like a, something built up. Um, like a, pay, a way to pay I think it's just basically card or cash if I'm right in thinking that um, in terms of uh, funding as well uh, just off the back of that question there is uh, some uh, some funding available to certain students so there's EMA which is education and maintenance allowance which is for 16 to 18 year olds Welsh government learning grant for over 19s um, so there's more details on our um, student support page. Uh, so or you can just give us a ring or pop in. I think it's on, uh, on www.cambria.ac.uk uh, forward slash student dash support. So there's more information there about whether you're or whether you, you are. Uh, other learners are entitled to funding to help them with their studies because we are all about support here. So yeah, whatever we can do. We don't yeah. leave people to starve. If um, if anybody's forgotten no. their card or their money, yeah. we, we can make sure that they get some lunch and not yeah. not be left hungry. Please, please, please <laughs> come and speak <laughs> to <laughs> student <laughs> services. Speak to your progress coach. We, you know, like like Lizzie said, we, we want to support learners. So please don't you know <laughs> make sure that you come and speak to us sorry can i just sorry can i just quickly say here as well um everybody at the college has a voice like the student voice is really really important to us and you must make your views known and this is really important about the quality the cost and the choice of food at our sites so if you have different um food requirements just let us know and if there isn't a good enough offer just make your voice known you don't have to be a student rep to make your voice known we've got student reps in each of our classes is, but honestly everybody has a voice so please let us know what you think yeah and i'm just going to add something there because i know that um for our autistic students and and also for people who have social anxiety uh, it can be quite daunting going into a canteen mm -hmm. so we do on all sites we, we have a club called engage which is a club um for, for anybody that feels that they um, just want a quieter space um, or maybe to meet other other people who also have some social anxiety and to build up into actually attending, into actually going into the canteen and things. So, um, so you're able to have your lunch there. It's in the quiet space in with our inclusion teams and um, you can have your lunch, bring your sandwiches, uh, play a game of chess, uh, whatever you need. So, you know, I know that it can be, it can sometimes seem a bit daunting going into a canteen. Uh, once you tasted the food, though, you it, you soon you soon go running in there because it is actually really good food. Um, um, I enjoy it myself. <laughs> anyway, so uh, moving on to uh, oh, Ian, are you able to take this question, please? This is um, will the students be able to speak to their course tutors on the twenty fifth? Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, we've got um, tutors from all our different subject areas uh, at the at the college, at all college sites on the twenty fifth. So um, you can come and actually ask about the course you've chosen. Um, you can also ask about other courses, and we can perhaps get you swapped on that day. So you start college on that the course that you want to be on. So there's lots of support on that day on the twenty fifth. So please do come down and see us. Thank you. Okay, just waiting to see if any more questions come up. Ah, okay, so Emily, thank you. 
how do we catch up if we have time off college if we are ill? Well, that's something we've definitely had a lot of over the last uh, couple of years with COVID. Um, James, are you able to answer this one? Or? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so what you'll find when you come to college is that um, most courses, certainly um, from my experience in the sixth form at Yale, um, all session resources are um, posted onto Google Classroom. Um, so you, you're able to basically catch up with any classwork that you missed, teachers will send work out to you or post it onto the Google Classroom. So you can always kind of keep in the loop um, if you are off college for an extended period of time. Um, and just um, ally to that as well, when you do um, come back into college after a period, after a period of absence, um, you can meet with your progress coaches um, and we can kind of have a chat, see what support needs to be put in place to help you catch up. Um, some tutors might offer um, lunchtime sessions as well, particularly yeah. close to exam periods or um, assignment deadlines. And we've also got our um, academic skills teams based in the library as well. So should you need further support with wider college studies, um, that is all there in place for you. So again, it's just a case of asking basically and, and kind of um, not suffering yourself with it. Just make let somebody know. Actually, our clubs and societies as well, they're all, you can join those virtually. So if you are off college, if you're off poorly, it means that you still have that sense of belonging. So you can take part in Active Cambria as well. We will actually put a camera into the classes and you can actually do the activities at home. And any of the clubs, um, we use the, the Google Classroom facility as well. Do you know, um, Yeah, that's that's brilliant, Rona. That's, um, that's really helpful, actually but also to reassure people who do have long-term health conditions and uh, that might include mental health, um, that we, we are, are able to put in support for things like exam access arrangements so that you might get extended time, say um, some additional uh, time to complete your, your assignments. Um, so it's, it really is, it comes back to that thing that we've been saying right throughout this um, Q&A session is about come and talk to us because um, everybody's individual needs we can address individually. Okay, uh, Deborah. So, uh, yeah, what is EMA? We do sometimes because we're so used to um, working in the college. Sometimes we we use these um, shortened versions. So, uh, Bethany, are you able to tell us? Yeah. So, EMA is Educational Maintenance Allowance, which is for sixteen to eighteen year olds who live in Wales. It's based on the course that you're doing, so it needs to be uh, a minimum of twelve hours. Um, and it's based on your household income. So just looking at the details, household incomes must be uh, below 20,817 or less for one young person in the household. Or household income must be 23,077 or less if there's uh, more than one young person in the household. So it's a government grant that pays £30 a week. But it's paid fortnightly, basically for a learner to come to college and support them with things that they need like lunch books things like that so it's it's like it is like an allowance really to to help them so um you can always google ema or have a look at our student uh, support website or pop in and ask we can we can go through the forms with you um whatever support you need if you want any more information uh, please feel free to contact us and Deborah, just Deborah, just on that, on, I know you've asked quite a few questions tonight, which is brilliant. Um, if you do email marketing at cambria.ac.uk, there is information within the welcome pack um, that we can send you out. Um, as I say, we'll be able to send you the literature uh, just in case that um, your son or daughter missed that cutoff point. We can we can get those on email to you straight away. But as um, as Beth has said, we've got members of staff who are here. We're not. We might be at home now. But we're we're in college now, and there are people at all sites. So if you did want to drop in and see us, um, before GCSE results day, when when it when it, we have the mad rush, it might might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, so. Beth, you have, <laughs> you have an answer, Crystal. Thank you for your question, Crystal. We appreciate that. Yeah. So um, there is an application pack for EMA. So it's quite um, it is quite a lengthy document, but. Don't be afraid of it. That is, there's plenty of people to help if you're not sure about anything. First of all, I would come and get the forms and then have a look through. 
you put your bank details into the into the application form which is then sent off because like i said it's a government grant it's not a college grant so the um the assessment the payments all things like that are made by the welsh government so yeah you put your bank details on the on the application form but first steps come come and get an application form or ring up and we can send you on out and then any anything else um just pop in and, and come and see us yeah we can help you with any funding queries um like i said there is also for 19 and above there is welsh government learning grant but again have a look what's online and the information that's available and then any queries from that please don't hesitate to contact us okay and um deborah yeah good good point about uh, bilingual maths again it's probably a question for our skills team i would have thought um does is anybody uh, anybody yeah. at the answer or is that something we should actually get the skills team to respond to yeah again on that one deborah i i, I wouldn't be 100 percent. i would imagine it is but mm -hmm. um rather than me taking a guess if you could just drop us a dm on 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 um Facebook, we can we can get back to you on that and make sure we're giving you the right <laughs> accent. Or oh, uh, Bethan, do you do you know the answer to that one? No, sorry. Okay, cool. um, <laughs> right, okay. Um, yeah, so Deborah, if you just want to drop us a DM on Facebook, um, rather than giving you any duff information, we can give you the right information, um, and we can get in touch with some staff who can give you that accurate information. Mm -hmm. um lucy oh that's that's great thank you yes um we are we have a lot of support for our transgender students of which we have um many so um just some of the things rona if you can if you can help with this one as well uh, we do have a full-time equality and diversity um officer in place in the college her name is alice Cherm. she's she's absolutely fantastic really supportive um, learners can go and can go and see her. They can actually contact her before she um, before she before they start if they want if they've got any concerns. Uh, we have uh, non-gender toilets. Um, I think I think we've got them on every site. So um, that's certainly something that we're we're putting in across all the sites. Mm -hmm. um, we've also got um, Rona mentioned before about a fantastic club that is really it's it's it, there's a they achieve a lot, don't they? Right they do. This is actually our most um, populated club, our yeah. LGBTQ plus um, club. And as I said, that's student led. So on each of the sites, you would have your own club there. And I know that um, the coaches, Bethan, they they work very closely as well. Your per I want to call them performance coach, but it's not within your team. I know Claire in D side is all is very active. So the students work very closely with Alice, um, our E and D officer, and a lot of the activities are organised across all the sites to make sure that everybody gets that same experience, you know, and opportunities across all the different sites. So you'll have your local site and then you will have, um, you'll be part of a much bigger college wide club as well, if you like. It's like a community. Yeah. I think we can, you know, really reassure you. Our staff are trained. They have, an, they have a really good understanding about transgender awareness. Um, mm -hmm. Staff are trained and the support is yeah. there. Um, and, you know, if you have any concerns at all, then we have got that full time person there who's who's there specifically for you. So, you know, um, don't have don't have any worries. And, and once again, get in touch with us with any specific questions and come and come and chat to us. But yeah, we're really progressive in this area, and we want to make sure that we are very uh, the most inclusive college, and we really welcome um, our transgender students. So, okay. Um, I think we haven't got much more time, but I really want to take this question from Emily. Owain, are you able to answer this, please? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, uh, it's a really good question because um, you might have you might have done your you might you might be seventeen or you've you've done your GCSEs already. You might be older and joining us, and that and you if you have GCSEs already, then you can confirm your place as soon as you get your your email your email, which is as I mentioned earlier, which is confirm your place from welcome uh, at cambry.ac.uk. So if you do have GCSEs already, um, then you can go ahead and confirm your place. Thank you. Eliza, fingers crossed for tomorrow then. Um, so uh, how, how do they contact about uh, about their A-level results? Is that the same as 
you were talking about before, Owain? Um, no. So um, with regards to A-level results, um, if you want to obviously speak to someone about your results, then we've got staff on at, um, at Yale and we've got staff on at D-side. Um, so there are staff, if you want to come in and speak to us, we'd love to see, we'd love to celebrate with you. Um, we'd also have to help you, obviously, if you want to look to move on to university and things like that. Um, my understanding is they're also emailed out, but James, you might be able to help me with that one. Yeah, so, um, sorry, uh, uh, the A-level results are uh, being emailed out. I know um, for results day tomorrow, um, a lot of the staff um, will be on site as well, um, supporting students, progress coaches will be in too. Um, because obviously there'll be um, kind of implications for university and UCAS applications with results day tomorrow. Um, so if you're unsure, I'd say just pop into um, one of the sites tomorrow and there'll be plenty of staff on hand to help with any um, queries that you might have. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and squeeze in the last few questions. Maria, thank you for, thank you for your question. Part-time courses, yeah, well, we've got lots of part-time courses uh, who wants to answer that one? Elaine, is that you? Um, I can take it. Beth, you might be able to support me with it, but I'll kick off and have a go. Um, okay, so part-time courses, um, how many days, etc. It, it varies. It varies what's, what, what size of course you're doing, um, when you're doing it, in the, whether you're doing it in the evenings, whether you're doing it in the days. It, it's really, there's, there's so many different part-time courses. It would depend on your particular course. Beth, anything to add on that yeah, one? Yeah, I mean... Uh, it could be that you're in college, say, one or two days a week because you're doing an apprenticeship course, or it could be perhaps that you're doing like a course in the evening and it could be three hours. Again, it, it depends on the specific um, the specific course that you're doing. But like I said, our full-time courses are usually three days. So I don't know whether some people assume that that's part-time, but that would be our full-time course, about 18 hours. Um, so yeah, I know that there's a part-time prospectus out. Um, the web, there's the new website as well to have a look at. So yeah, um, it, it, de it depends. But if you wanna contact us for more information about any part-time courses, please, please do. Okay. Thank you, Beth, and thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us this evening. We hope that we've given you um, a bit of an insight into the support that's available once you start on your courses. Um, I would like to remind parents and carers that they can sign up for our newsletter. Um, there you go. There's the newsletter. It give you lots of information, all the, all the things you uh, never knew you didn't know. Um, so please do uh, take down that detail. And um, I just it just leaves me to say you got really there was a theme throughout tonight and that was about just talk to us. We recognise that everybody's different and we're there to support you. Uh, we're excited to see you in September. We can't wait. And um, we hope that you you're excited too. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to the, the panel here tonight. Um, and thank you for your time. And uh, stay in touch and uh, get it. Have a look, send us any messages that you want through social media and stay in touch with us. We'll see you in September. And good luck next week. Good luck with your results. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll be thinking of you. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it. Dior, yeah. thank you. Good night. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.